Welcome to this clinical skills video demonstrating how to tie an interrupted suture. By the end of this video you will be able to handle the suture instruments correctly and tie at least one interrupted suture. Please note this video will only focus on instrument handling and tying an interrupted suture. You will learn how to do the full procedure in part 2. Please remove the sterile drapes, gauze and gauze balls. Keep these for part 2. Use the non-toothed forceps to position the needle in the needle holder. The needle tip should be pointing up towards the ceiling and towards you, like this. Now imagine your wound is a clock face. Either end of the wound is number 3 and number 9 of the clock. The top is 12 and the bottom is 6, just as shown. The next part has two stages. I will tie an interrupted suture without instruction. Then I will tie a second interrupted suture with detailed instruction.
Use your non-toothed forceps to grasp the edge of the wound furthest away from you. Pierce the skin with the needle at a 90 degree angle, approximately half a centimetre away from the wound edge. Rotate your wrist to bring the needle up through the middle of the wound. Grasp the end of the needle with the non-tooth forceps and pull it through. Regrasp the needle with the needle holders as soon as possible. Grasp the wound edge that is nearest to you and bring the needle back inside the wound. Rotate your wrist to bring the needle through the skin approximately half a centimetre away from the wound edge that is nearest to you. Now grasp the needle with the non-tooth forceps to pull it through and re-grasp with the needle holders. Pull the thread through until you leave a small tail approximately two inches long, like this. Put down the non-toothed forceps. Make sure the tail is positioned at 12 on the clock face and make sure the rest of the thread is pointing towards 6 on the clock face. Position the needle holders along the length of the wound. This will be between 9 and 3 on the clock face. Pick up the thread at 6 with your spare hand and wrap the thread around the needle holder twice, each time returning the thread back to 6. Point the needle holders towards 12 and use them to grasp the very tip of the tail. Use the needle holders to pull the tail towards number 6 and at the same time use your other hand to push the thread towards 12. Place the needle holders along the length of the wound between 9 and 3. Use your hand to wrap the thread around the needle holder once and return it back to 12. Point the needle holder towards the 6. Grasp the end of the tail with the needle holders and pull the tail back to 12. At the same time, using your hand to pull the thread back to 6. Once again, place the needle holders along the length of the wound between 9 and 3. Use your hand to wrap the thread around the needle holder once and return back to 6. Point the needle holder towards 12. Grasp the end of the tail with the needle holders and pull the tail back to 6 and push the thread back to 12. Now cut the thread with the small scissors leaving two little ears approximately 2 cm long. Well done, you have just completed your first interrupted suture using a surgeon's knot.